What's up YouTube and welcome to another Porsche 928 project video. Today we're going to be working on my 1988 Porsche 928 S4 model and I believe most of what I'm going to cover today should apply to most 928s in that they still run on a very similar vacuum uh, accumulator system and vacuum solenoid system to power the heating and air conditioning in the car. Uh, what I've done to my car, and this will be probably a whole separate video, is gone through the very extensive process of replacing all of the actuators for the heating and air conditioning that are vacuum actu actuated. Uh, there are four in the car. One powers the comb flap, which is this top flap. You have one for the footwell flap. You have one for the defrost, which is behind the steering column. And then you also have the very notorious uh, recirculation flap or accumulator which is for the flap that's under the uh, passenger footwell under the glove box. Again, not going to go into that whole process today. That is all done. Um, however, what I decided to do when buttoning things back together was check vacuum on the solenoids, which are mounted on this strip here, which is typically inserted underneath the center console. So I've done the liberty of taking that all out, and I'm not going to go over all the whole process for that. There's several write-ups online. Uh, but what I noticed is there's a lot about vacuum testing the accumulators, but not a whole lot about vacuum testing the solenoids. And what I noticed is even after changing all the accumulators, I still had leaking solenoids. So something had to be done. Um, what is very unfortunate is that Porsche is very good about selling you all the different accumulators. Those you can definitely get the parts for, no issues. But the solenoids have been out of production for quite some time. So the car has a bank of five of these. Um, again, they kind of correlate to your different accumulators. And then you also have one that is for uh, the heater valve, which is underneath the hood. So again, each of these correspond to a different one. You have all these vacuum lines that run to them. Again, I've taken the liberty of removing those for testing purposes. And then each of the solenoids has an electrical connection that uh, plugs into the back, and they all screw into this metal bracket. So to test them out, uh, really what you need to do is remove what's called the manifold, which connects all of them into a single vacuum line, and it's this five-pronged little doohickey that Porsche will happily sell you for about 60 bucks for just this little piece of rubber. And I have replaced that, by the way, just, you know, as a testing purpose. Um, you need to take that off for, t for testing these, and then you will um, hook up your MIDI-vac, or vacuum tester of choice, onto the top of each of these valves uh, on the solenoid. However, you also have the other uh, valve for each of these, which you need to plug with um, just a little simple vacuum plug for each, just to make sure that you're not losing vacuum through that as you're doing the testing. So I've taken the liberty, I've already hooked up the MIDI vac um, onto the top of solenoid number two, we'll call it here. And then I've got my MIDI vac here on the other end. And the testing method for these is to pump uh, the MIDI vac to about 15. So we shall do that. It's very kind of hard to see through the vacuum. So you can see I've got about 15 um, on the MIDI vac showing. And then ultimately to find out, well, like number one, I guess I should slow down. Uh, some of the solenoids I had were absolute leakers in that already I would be losing pressure. So you would see that uh, start to fall very quickly even in some cases. They were very, very past it. So what you want to do to complete the test is you're actually going to turn the ignition key on. You don't have to start the engine, but just turn it to one notch. And ultimately you want to see, is it going to continue holding vacuum? Um, the other way to check it is to start sliding your knobs here. And that's actually, you're going to hear some of the solenoids clicking as you do it. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but you can hear some of the solenoids clicking on and off. And then we'll just kind of check back at where our vacuum is. And you can see this one is... Sorry, let me cut that off. It's really loud. Um, as you can see, it's, it's holding good vacuum. And that was not the case with a lot of them. Some of them actually would hold vacuum on the initial application, but then once you turned the ignition on and started clicking through the different settings on the climate control, it would start to lose vacuum very rapidly. So ultimately, I would think this is a good solenoid, uh, but let me tell you my story of how much of a pain in the butt it was to get to this point. So now that I have my five solenoids here, it has actually taken three separate batches of parts, essentially, to get a working group of five. And I've already vacuum tested these, and they were, they're all holding vacuum. Um, what I did initially, since the parts are unavailable, is I found a seller on eBay that was selling a used, untested uh, bank of solenoids along with all the vacuum lines and stuff they'd taken out of a parts car. 
and I was kind of excited because of the five that I got off that car, two of them had rock solid vacuum. So I think two of them I'm actually using now um, just because they had a very good vacuum on them. Uh, two of them were definitely complete duds. They lost vacuum immediately. I knew those weren't going to work. And then the other one was kind of like borderline, but I didn't really trust it. So I still had at least one more on my original bank that I wanted to change out. I think what I tested initially were three of the five were losing some extent of vacuum and two of them extreme amount of vacuum. Um, and I figured, well, how else can I get these parts unless I just have to wait for somebody else to part out a 928? Um, I did a little bit of stealth searching and started thinking about what other manufacturers might use these parts, considering they're not really branded. They don't have any Porsche markings or anything like that on them, or even Mercedes, which you would typically see on some 928 parts. And ultimately, um, Mercedes used a very similar system in their 80s S-Class models and things like that, but their um, actual uh, solenoids won't fit on this panel. They're very similar in design, but different enough that it wouldn't work. So then I got thinking about BMWs. I'm well-versed on 80s BMWs. My 86 series does not use solenoids. Uh, it has a Bowden cable system for controlling the HVAC. Um, but the 7 series of the early 80s, the E23 body, actually uses a very similar system. So starting to go through BMW parts, I noticed that um, they looked like the same part. And I thought, oh, well, this is great. And what else was interesting is the 928 uses five of these solenoids. The 7 Series BMW uses six. Well, if you notice, there's a blank spot right here. So this is actually the same bracket that a 7 Series BMW would use, and it would just have one extra solenoid there for its settings. Apparently it needs one more to control something on that car. So now that I did some digging in 7 Series BMW parts diagrams, I found a part number for the BMW part. It looked like the same part. Um, it had the same markings on it, no branding as far as manufacturer, but it had this 12 volt marking on it here and ultimately looked to be the same design. So I felt really good about ordering it. Unfortunately, BMW, uh, they are no longer available as well, but there are at least some supply of them out there, it appears. So went through on eBay and found a seller that had new old stock. It looked like it had probably come out of a an ex-dealership uh, warehouse or something from 30 or 40 years ago and they were all new in the box but the boxes definitely had some wear on them and ultimately I ordered a set of five hoping I would get at least some that were working well. So this is actually the BMW part number and you will have better luck by searching for this. Um, so I'm pulling this up on the screen. It's 6411137625 and you can see it was just tagged valve I guess at the era of when this was put together. And then BMW um, boxed it up and sold it accordingly. Um, I don't know how long these have been out of production, but this box is not like a current BMW parts box. So I would say this is probably from the 80s itself, and it just sat in a you know parts store warehouse or whatever for many, many years. Um, but there do seem to be a few of these left out there. Now, uh, now that I got my set of five of these, I was all jazzed. I was going to replace all five with new old stock parts. Uh, some of these were leakers as well, <laughs> and I'm not too surprised by that because they obviously had some age on them as well. So now ultimately I think I used two from this, two from my originals, and maybe one from the parts car, and ultimately I now have a set of five that I feel confident about putting back together, but it was a lot of doing to get to that point. So um, kind of just sharing my tale, what's really the process look like. Um, if you do want to go this route, hopefully that helps out that, you know, you have at least one other source for parts is that you can might possibly find some of those 7 Series BMW actuators or solenoids, I should say. Um, and hopefully that might help somebody out. So that's really about it. I'm going to button this back up in the car. I feel good about the vacuum. I'm hoping this will solve all of my vacuum leaks, of which there were plenty before this point. And I would love to experience what proper 928 heating and air conditioning is like with a fully functioning system. Because I've heard it's a pretty fantastic thing. I just needed a lot of maintenance to get to that point. Um, hopefully this helps you out. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.